three your life now. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome all uh, to our QNRF Research Outcome Seminar on Intellectual Property. Uh, QNRF is organizing uh, this uh, special edition of uh, ROS for the first time on intellectual property. Um, this is a very important uh, uh, topic for uh, QNRF and uh, um, um, you, as you can see from the agenda that you have already received, we have two parts, two big parts in, uh, in this ROS. So the first part of the ROS uh, will be, uh, will started with a, a statement from uh, our executive director, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, so uh, our executive director will give us uh, um, the uh, statement, QNRF statement on IP and innovation. Uh, right after this statement, we'll give the floor to our distinguished uh, uh, speakers. Uh, we have five speakers uh, um, all in all. Um, these speakers will be uh, uh, sh will, sh will be sharing with us their uh, experience in, in um, seeking IP protection to the outcomes that uh, um, QNRF uh, has funded through its uh, programs. Uh, after the speakers, after the five speakers, we'll start the Q&A question. Uh, uh, so the Q&A uh, sorry session. Um, uh, right after the Q&A session. Uh, we will be uh, uh, introducing our uh, uh, guests, uh, their the panelists, uh, uh, and, and um, therefore uh, uh, they will be presenting themselves. Uh, I would like just to say that we have uh, an international uh, 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 panelist uh, because we've got uh, people from Qatar based in Doha. We have a panelist from Saudi Arabia. And we have another panelist from Paris, France. Uh, and we have uh, a panelist from uh, IDKT, uh, and, and, and then uh, the panelists will be uh, answering questions. We'll hear first from our speakers. Uh, so the first questions will be from our uh, speakers, and then we'll give the floor to the audience to uh, uh, put their questions, and the panelists will be happy to answer the questions from the panelists. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, and uh, I am now pleased and honored to give the floor to our executive director, uh, Dr. Abdusatar Ta'i. So please, Dr. Uh, your statement on IP and innovation. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Nafisa. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to you all and welcome to today's research outcome seminar, which will be focusing on the prospects and experience of QNR funded researchers in exploiting the, the IP assets generated from their projects. Uh, throughout the 15 years of our efforts in building a thriving local research community in Qatar, QNR has been generously investing in advancing science and technology uh, in this country, and we are thrilled to see some excellent uh, returns for this investment where in terms of uh, uh, in terms of world class research ecosystem building significant human capacity at all levels from high school kids k to 12 to well established researchers building a state of art research infrastructure or even in the production of outstanding array of scientific publications, both in terms of quantity and quality as attested by the excellent statistics on the scientific front. On the flip side, in terms of IP and commercialization front, while we fully realize the, uh, the natural time lag between scientific publication and achieving IPRs, we have disproportionately modest IP assets generated in comparison. For example, the number of invention disclosures amounting to around 275, while the number of patents granted so far amount to only 60 patents. I'm talking about QNRF uh, funded project. Furthermore, we are yet to see any startup or spin-off company generated from the over 
thousand projects that KNF has funded throughout its rich portfolio of research funding programs. Allow me to say that this gloomy picture calls on all the, the RDI players at all levels to work together diligently and to find the means to improve the country's record of innovation and commercialization. However, on the bright side, with the recently launched QRDI strategy 2030, we now have a clear roadmap for creating synergies and strengthening the ties between the researchers and the local industries in order to help bridge the gap between research output, outcome, and impact. In this spirit, we at QNRF are encouraging applicants to, to submit innovative technology-based research proposals to our funding programs. We will also, uh, we will prioritize for funding. Moreover, we have over the past couple of years dedicated considerable efforts with the arrival of Dr. Nafisa, of course, uh, considerable efforts and resources towards the development and utilization of the most advanced intellectual property searches to help establishing novelty and ensuring the originality of research proposals submitted. Uh, this complements our aim of providing our researchers and academics with the, with the practical opportunities to secure the best intellectual property protection and realize the outcomes uh, generated uh, from their research projects. Dear participants, our efforts did not stop here as we have started launching a new funding programs to ensure that exceptional outcomes produced through the QNR funded research are translated into tangible, useful outcomes. On such initiative, one, one of such initiatives is our newly launched NPRP Research Outcome Implementation Award with a nice uh, acronym, ROIA, R-O-I-A. And it is our vision, we hope, that uh, we is uh, one of our uh, push in that direction. This program has been specially designed to help realize, implement, and, uh, and deploy the outcome of NPRP projects, uh, which, which exhibit clear societal and economic benefits to help Qatar meet its national objectives. We are also working diligently to launch a new program to help researchers who have promising techn technological solutions to mature their innovative research outcomes. From low TRL technological, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, technological readiness levels to a higher level via a new initiative is called the MPRP TRL Maturation Award to expedite the process of IP registration and commercialization. With the above diagnostics, I hope you realize why, to the, why today's research outcome seminar is critically important. So to this end, I am pleased to welcome the five, five experienced researchers from different disciplines who are well versed in intellectual property production to provide us all with an opportunity to learn, interact, and be inspired by the successes and the challenges that they have faced throughout their uh, respective journeys, which I am sure will help us greatly in our quest to improve our achievements in the IP and commercialization front. I am also glad to welcome our distinguished panelists joining us from different countries who will share with us their perspective regarding uh, some of the burning issues related to the intellectual uh, property and commercialization and how to address them. And in closing, I would I look forward to your engagement and interaction with the speakers and the panel. And, and I encourage you to make the most of our, uh, of today's presentation. Thank you all for your for listening and God bless. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abstatar, for your statement. I think uh, 
um, uh, the messages are very clear. Uh, and uh, now I, I, I'm going to give the floor uh, to our uh, distinguished speakers. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank them very much uh, on behalf of our uh, uh, QNRF, on behalf of our executive director, because you have been really working uh, hard throughout uh, the past uh, couple of weeks. So thank you for uh, your efforts and for your involvement. Uh, we have uh, the first speaker, I give the floor to the first speaker, who is Dr. Uh, Noor. Dr. Noor is a research associate from uh, uh, HBKU. Uh, then uh, please, Dr. Noor, uh, just uh, a couple of words to introduce yourself, your institution, and please go ahead. And uh, this is a reminder, uh, please be mindful you have to the time you have only 10 minutes uh, per speaker. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can I be heard clearly? Yes, yes. go ahead. Yes, OK. Uh, good morning, everyone. To quickly introduce myself, my name is Noor Majboul. I am a research associate at Qatar Biomedical Research Institute, Hamad bin Khalifa University. Sorry. If it's freezing, don't just stop, stop sharing and share again. I think maybe I can. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm just starting by introducing the uh, key inventors. So this chart highlights the key inventors behind the IP generation from our uh, research projects, but this uh, definitely does not underestimate the significant contribution of other team members. So uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Omar Al-Ajnaf, our principal investigator, Dr. Hawari Abdusalam, Dr. Nishan Bekas, Dr. Hassan Hamida, and myself. So in the coming 10 minutes, I will briefly take you through our journey in the world of IP starting from IP generation throughout IP protection and all the way to IP exploitation. A journey, I must say, at times was tough, but now I came to realize that those obstacles that we have faced were nothing but stepping stones for a brighter future. So uh, why neurodegenerative diseases? I mean, neurodegenerative diseases affect millions of people worldwide. Uh, it's an age-related problem, so realistically speaking, no one is safe. Uh, uh, statistics show that at least 50 million people are uh, uh, struggling with uh, Alzheimer's disease or related dementia. Uh, we have at least 10 million new cases every year, and at least 7 to 10 million people are struggling with Parkinson's disease on a daily basis. And this not even to highlight the uh, billions of dollars that have been spent on the healthcare uh, support. So what did we do as scientists to tackle neurodegenerative diseases? Uh, one of the primary approaches that we follow is protein-based biomarkers discovery, meaning that we look for a specific proteins in human body fluids that can actually serve as disease markers. So what we have done uh, in that regard, we have generated novel mouse antibodies but more interestingly, we have also generated novel camel antibodies, uh, taking advantage of uh, where we are, that can target these specific proteins. And we have also developed several tests and kits that serve the same purpose. So uh, we have, uh, an, in, in general, uh, generated antibodies in terms of IP, immunoassays, as well as, of course, the know-how, the protocols, the recipes that we have created. So the next question was how to protect the IP that was generated. So the first step we did was to um, submit an invention disclosure, and that was done by the inventors, uh, as in like we uh, submit the invention disclosure through the online uh, SOFIA program, and then the uh, industry development and knowledge transfer office will receive our uh, submission. They will review uh, our uh, application. They will share it with the company with the right expertise to provide uh, a feedback about the uh, invention disclosure as well as recommendations. After that, we go through uh, meetings. We, we receive the report, we review the report, and then we request a meeting with the IDKT office to discuss the report. Sometimes we also meet with the attorneys. We have to do that on uh, uh, several uh, occasions, actually. 
just to discuss the uh, ideal approach uh, to uh, move forward. After that, again, the decision goes back to the IDKE office to decide what would be optimal uh, approach to protect the IP. Uh, we have to take into consideration also the cost as well as the potential leveraging of the uh, of the IP generated. Uh, so then, based on that, we decide how to protect, and uh, I'm proud to say that till date, we have submitted almost 15 invention disclosures to the uh, IP office. Several uh, of these uh, applications were uh, elected for a US provisional patent. We have also protected most of our assays, um, some of our antibodies, as well as the know-how as trade secrets. And also, uh, this year, we have uh, finalized the registration of CABI Biotech as a trademark with Qatar Foundation. CABI stands for Qatar Antibodies. So CABI Biotech is now a trademark where we protect under the trademark most of our uh, trade secrets and some of our, uh, IV, uh, some of our antibodies as well. The next and the, the final uh, station in our journey was to exploit the IP and how to, you know, I mean, we have been working on so much research activities. The next question was how to apply that uh, to the to the to achieve the optimal um, uh, benefit. So I'm also proud to say that several of our uh, antibodies that we have uh, generated and protected are uh, now uh, under consideration to be licensed by several leading companies in the field that have showed interest to license our technologies. Uh, another international company uh, in uh, conducting clinical trials for Parkinson's disease uh, have also uh, reached out uh, for us to uh, select select some of our assays to be used to assess the efficacy of the vaccine that they are developing for Parkinson's disease. And we are also have been working very hard uh, recently trying to uh, build a CABI uh, biotech startup to be uh, the first startup uh, in Qatar and maybe even in the region as an outlet to serve as an outlet to commercialize our uh, research activities. I mean, as I mentioned at the very start of this talk, the journey was tough at some times, and uh, some of the uh, questions that were uh, repeatedly posed, and perhaps the panelists can uh, help answer some of these questions. We always had the debate of whether uh, the balance, how to find the right balance between the need to publish our work, because at the end of the day, we're also researchers, and at the same time, how to protect the IP first. There was always a question when it comes to uh, choosing the ideal approach to protect an IP to consider the cost uh, that is needed to file a, a patent, knowing that it is an expensive uh, procedure. And also, finally, is how to integrate IP into a business strategy, maximizing the value of the IP that we have generated. With that, uh, I reached the end of my presentation. I would like to uh, thank uh, all the people that have supported us through this journey at different angles. Uh, starting by QNRF, we have uh, been very fortunate to receive two uh, grants uh, from cycle eight and nine of NPRB that have actually majorly uh, contributed to the IP uh, generated so far. I would also I'd also like to thank the uh, IDKT office for being uh, very patient and very supportive and for the massive efforts that they have provided throughout this journey. And last but not least, I would also like to thank the RDI office for creating the innovation uh, fellowship program that have helped uh, junior scientists like myself to learn how to conduct the research with a clear market application and how to develop entrepreneurial uh, skills. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, really excellent, um, excellent presentation. Um, uh, I, I, I would like to just say uh, one word. Uh, Dr. Noor uh, uh, is helping us uh, uh, promoting uh, one of our messages or one of our goal, goals through this uh, um, um, ROS, uh, which is to demystify and clarify the concept of IP. So as you've seen from her presentation, IP is not only patents. She talked about trade secrets, so your know-how can be protected by trade secrets. For example, she talked about a trademark. So uh, uh, patents, trade secrets, trademarks, uh, all these are under uh, the umbrella of IP. So uh, thank you, Dr. Anur, for uh, your very clear and, and, and uh, really uh, valuable uh, presentation. Uh, without further ado, I give the floor to uh, Professor Haytham from uh, Texas A&M. Please, the floor is yours.
Dr. Hayden, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Nafisa. Okay, uh, uh, assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, so, uh, and thank you for the uh, invitation. Um, I will be talking about the research uh, success leading to technology development from uh, uh, my uh, uh, perspective. Uh, according to my experience, first I would like uh, to acknowledge and appreciate the support from uh, uh, QNRF and NPRP. So those particular uh, projects uh, that led to a significant number of uh, innovations. However, there are also other uh, uh, on the way, and those are uh, uh, researchers and PIs who contributed together with me and uh, generating a uh, different number of, uh, of uh, IPs. So we are doing a focused research that is aligned uh, with Qatar's pri uh, priority. Of course, our priority uh, comes with uh, human capacity building, uh, uh, recru recruitment, mentorship, building careers, many uh, uh, amazing uh, achievements, uh, uh, and uh, 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 students graduated uh, uh, and having excellent positions uh, worldwide and in, in Qatar. So we keep the continuity of uh, success, uh, successful research with a clear vision and uh, patience. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we take care of the uh, IP's uh, generation and protection. Um, there is uh, always a struggle uh, uh, to convince the researchers, the young researchers, students, etc., that uh, 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 IP's pr protections, patenting is uh, more uh, important at this stage than the publications. However, always students, they are fast <clears throat> uh, and they would like to publish as, as fast as possible. So we are aware of that and try to protect our uh, uh, innovations. So we, we find uh, uh, promising uh, uh, ideas uh, over 10 and uh, I would see uh, approaching 15 disclosures. Uh, um, however, uh, most of them either uh, expired or uh, abandoned. At this stage, we have one patent issued and uh, hopefully the other one uh, 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 to, be, uh, to be issued. Uh, this is an example of the uh, uh, IPs that uh, we are working on and uh, developing. Uh, uh, this is an example just and it's about the uh, photovoltaic inverter. And we are trying to uh, uh, build those inverters and controls so and that in terms of uh, design and in terms of control so that would work at uh, a higher temperature. Uh, unlike the available in the in the market that uh, uh, start uh, uh, derating at a certain temperature 40 and then shut down, complete shutdown and 60 so that we have solutions for uh, 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 environment uh, environments such as in Qatar, in the region, and in many uh, countries as well. We succeed, succeeded uh, succeeded to do a uh, uh, good work, uh, uh, I believe, in the in the lab. Uh, uh, we developed <clears throat> different uh, different uh, uh, products uh, uh, in the lab environment, uh, starting from low power and to uh, high power uh, uh, applications. And uh, we focused at this stage on the uh, low residential and uh, and uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, skills, uh, so that would be uh, uh, easily deployed and uh, uh, commercialized uh, at uh, uh, a later st stage. Hopefully, we will be successful in this re regard. This is a, a brochure about one of our uh, products. So we have products. Uh, uh, really uh, uh, far away from uh, uh, typical uh, research. We are at very, really advanced uh, advanced stage in, in, in offering uh, excellent products. We have many power electronic solutions, smart solutions, different uh, uh, applications. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, also an example. So this is an example of the product that we did. So it is uh, research and finally uh, 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 at uh, excellent really uh, 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 as an excellent product. If you look uh, 
and compare with uh, with the research world worldwide. This is a typical research product that could be found at, uh, in the labs at many universities, but this is uh, 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 our product that is uh, uh, modular mechanically and electrically that can uh, increase for higher power uh, and uh, lower power so at different uh, for different uh, uh, power uh, uh, PV power applications. Uh, then um, and at this stage, actually, uh, the encouragement is uh, was and the vision to go for uh, commercial commercialization, uh, try to move out of the lab and to transfer this uh, this uh, knowledge. And we started uh, from 2017 uh, uh, looking for uh, a kind of incubation so that the, the pro product will be uh, really commercialized because it should be uh, it should be uh, manufactured at, at uh, a uh, commercialized uh, uh, level and then test it uh, uh, as per uh, specific standards. And there is a cost actually, and uh, uh, this is uh, 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 the experience that really the, the needed support for knowledge transfer is, I would say, from my experience, not less than for the uh, for the research. So we faced many ups and downs, uh, and. Uh, uh, examples uh, uh, going, for example, uh, to uh, talking and QSTP so that we we uh, uh, create our uh, uh, startup company. And uh, at one of the meetings, actually, uh, uh, one asked me, OK, so if you have a, a company, if you establish a company, how much you would put uh, from your own money? And I answered, uh, uh, as I remember, I was with two of my researchers. Uh, uh, 100 or 150 thousand dollars I'm ready uh, 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 to invest but this was a, a, a turning time for me that really yes I need I need to invest uh, from my side really uh, if I'm convinced about the product that I'm doing and I decided uh, uh, to sell uh, uh, my house it was in the US and I sold it transferred the money here to, to Qatar and of course there is an example before me that uh, 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 I even followed with Dr. Shihab. But anyhow, there are uh, uh, difficulties in here the requiring a full time researcher. Even when we were ready to have a full time uh, full time re uh, uh, researcher, then a lot of uh, 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 difficulties that um, would not make it easy to go forward and, and, and have this startup company being uh, supported in, in fast uh, uh, time. Then we went to the uh, uh, asking about the product development fund. Uh, and OK, so we were uh, 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 required to have a Qatari owner uh, 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 for the company. We had a, a Qatari and a cost share we had because we wanted to invest from our own money but later on appeared that the category should be a full time uh, in the in the uh, uh, in this company so anyhow some high, uh, uh, highlights we are aware of the importance for ip generation and protection we have very successful track uh, record of de uh, developing technologies and products at very high uh, 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 readiness uh, 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 levels and uh, yeah, we succeeded with knowledge transfer to the technic uh, technical uh, uh, community, uh, filed patents applications for technologies that we believe uh, uh, have high commercialization potential. We are trying to be on the way uh, uh, for technology uh, transfer. Challenges, limited support for incubation leading to commercialization. This is from uh, uh, my experience. Current rules for incubation are not fully aligned with local conditions in the country, such as requiring full time employees. High cost uh, uh, in Qatar for fabrication and experience, uh, experience per personnel. Here the startup uh, support is, is most needed. Uh, retaining experienced researchers that we are uh, losing when the, when the uh, 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 research from QNRF ends. Uh, when the project uh, ends, if not continued and uh, funded uh, 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 further, and then ab abandoning uh, submitted disclosures, which makes uh, uh, which discourages uh, the researchers to uh, to submit again and then try to publish rather than uh, uh, protect their uh, IPs. Recommendations: There is still a need for. Uh, uh, more national investment in technology commercialization to develop success stories and attract the private se uh, sector to invest invest in the technology field. 
There is a need for a stronger coordination between research funding such as uh, QNRF and, uh, and technology transformation uni units uh, such as QSTP towards adopting and uh, flourishing the success stories. A smooth post successful research support is very needed here to accelerate, accelerate the uh, success uh, 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 stories and retain those experienced uh, uh, researchers. So this smoothness in adopting the successful uh, 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 outcome is, is, is needed really. And some degree uh, of freedom for patenting if uh, the cost high or cannot patent uh, many uh, of our IPs, then we can, uh, 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 how we can uh, protect our, our ideas and uh, either letting us take care of that and uh, uh, we can, I believe we can do uh, uh, this. Uh, opportunities, leadership commitment uh, uh, in Qatar to support the RD uh, efforts. Continuity of research support in Qatar, mainly what we see from QNRF and uh, all those are opportunities and the relatively mature research uh, culture in Qatar. So now we are at, at advanced stage uh, 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 of this maturity so people would understand what is research and now let us go further for uh, uh, technology transfer. With that, I thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Hisham. Uh, Hisham, sorry. Uh, I would like to share my presentation again. Okay, I'm I'm going to share my presentation again. Yeah, uh, um, just a couple of words. Uh, thank you very much. Another excellent uh, talk from uh, Professor he uh, Professor Hisham. So Professor Hisham was uh, focusing mainly on on kind of. Uh, outcomes based on on patenting because his 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 outcome is a product so it is the typical uh, uh, IP that everybody knows. Um, he uh, also highlighted uh, problems uh, um, related to his journey from the lab to the creation of the startup. Uh, this is very good because it is an opportunity for the panelists uh, afterwards to uh, elaborate on that and see how uh, these uh, uh, challenges can be mitigated. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Haytham. I give now the floor to Dr. Fedwa. Dr. Fedwa is coming from uh, uh, HBKU, another speaker from HBKU. Uh, Dr. Fedwa, the floor is yours. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, institution, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nafisa. So my name is Dr. Fedwa Meluhi. I'm senior scientist at the Qatar Environment and uh, Energy Research Institute. And I will be telling you uh, today a little bit about um, the intellectual property journey in data-driven materials discovery. So let me just introduce you a little bit uh, to, to this uh, area, um, uh, research field or this, uh, this research area. So uh, so this uh, um, data-driven materials design, I mean, we, we got uh, funded by QNRF uh, in the period between 2016 and 2019. And this was a, a project that was uh, called Crack Solar. And then uh, the project actually consisted of designing using computer uh, simulation novel materials for solar cell applications and uh, beyond. And it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it mainly um, uh, aimed to address the uh, perovskite toxicity issue and by predicting lead free compounds, tackling the perovskite stability and innovate uh, routes to improve it. Uh, and also actually using uh, uh, workflow and automated work workflow and a, a high high performance computing uh, infrastructure that we have in the country. So uh, we aim at narrowing the composition and search for materials while looking for desired properties. And all these processes actually uh, uh, are aimed to uh, tremendously save the time and money during the materials synthesis by extracting key properties uh, at key chemical concentrations. So um, uh, once when we started the project, really it wasn't actually very clear what kind of IPs we, we could uh, we could produce. But I mean, towards the end of the project, I'm going to be taking you towards that journey. So we have been able to, um, uh, to produce patents in niche areas. We, we, we came up with novel concepts, uh, copyrighted solutions and trademarks and so on. So let me just give you some uh, few examples. So, for example, so um, uh, during I mean uh, the project timeline. So and the, towards the second year of the project, uh, so we, disco we discovered uh, a novel 
composition of uh, of materials that uh, I mean uh, after you know we were honestly speaking we were thinking about publishing but then we realized that there is potential IP there so we approached uh, uh, the IDKT office and uh, we filed a US provision, provisional patent uh, and then uh, we have been able actually to increase the technology readiness level by uh, performing further calculations and by uh, doing the experimental proof of concept and towards the, the third year of the project so we we, we successfully converted it into a non-provisional and we, we were at the time really very supported by internal institutional strategy okay that that was really focused on uh, it was one of the main um, uh, challenges and uh, topics that were addressed. Of course, uh, we had an excellent infrastructure from the perspective of computation and from uh, laboratories and characterizations and also in terms of capabilities and expertise. So I had on board uh, experienced uh, colleague uh, they had that, that had uh, uh, prior experience in patenting and uh, in the solar therapy. So and then, you know, if, if I take that example, so this is a very successful story. So we, we disclosed pretty early, I would say, near two of the projects and then uh, the patent got granted. Uh, afterwards, so we continued our uh, our investigations and found out that uh, you know there there was another um, interesting novel materials uh, composition that we have uh, disclosed, and that happened actually towards the beginning of year three. So uh, uh, you know uh, between year three and the project, and actually we we, we faced, started to face challenges in increasing the technology readiness level because the f the funding of the project ended in 2019. So still, I mean, we have been able to convert it into a provisional uh, patent, uh, and then from that the project and to today uh, today, I mean, I have to really thank uh, my institute. So we have had fair internal institutional support until August 2020 to tr try to scale up and then uh, do the experimental proof of concept. Uh, then starting from September 2020, so there have been further decrease in the funding, lower internal institutional priority in this research area. So, you know, in the, the current status of this patent is really under review by the patent office and then we will see, I mean, what, what will happen with it, whether it will be continued or um, discontinued. Uh, in you know uh, later towards the end of the third year so um, uh, we came up with an innovative perovskite stability uh, route that we discovered and then we went for the us uh, provisional patent but then you might realize that you know we have disclosed pretty towards the end of the project so we really had uh, significant challenges in increasing the technology readiness level uh, and also converting to non-provisional so the, the, that patent was almost dropped uh, at the, you know at, at, the, at the time of converting to non-provisional um, i mean we did our utmost best to secure some key chemicals and so on so there, there was delays in that and also i mean at, the, at certain point once once we got the chemicals the QNR funded uh, expired and we couldn't do the, the chemical synthesis so I mean uh, if I take from the project end to today so there have been also changes in the strategy as I just mentioned so the very low inter uh, in internal institutional priority uh, and funding for perovskite research uh, and this has, I mean, this was one of the factors that led to uh, the decision to discontinue this patent uh, from the QF uh, protection. And now when we were discussing um, uh, about the ownership transfer, and um, I will be directing uh, also my questions to Dr. Haytham and uh, you know, other colleagues regarding that. So that journey, you know, if you want to own, own and you want to develop by yourself, what would be uh, the challenges? Uh, I have also to, to tell, I mean, uh, also very successful stories regarding um, uh, software. So, I mean, as I have mentioned, so our work is really combination of uh, experiments and uh, and calculations. Uh, so, uh, towards the end of the year, so we had matured uh, a database and uh, software so solutions. And we applied for the departmental approvals to disclose QNRF uh, project outcomes. And I was lucky, so we, we got the approval to, to move forward and disclose to uh, IDKT. Uh, and then we, we, have, we have had good internal institutional support until August 2020. Uh, from September 2020, there have been also further lowering in the international inter institutional priority in perovskite uh, research. But um, I'm very optimistic about this uh, portfolio of, uh, of databases and software because uh, in December 2020, some of the solutions are uh, have been uh, are under maturity and supported by the HBKU Vice President of Research Innovation uh, Fund Award. 
So uh, just, I mean, I try to, to give you uh, just an overview of, you know, a mix of, um, of experiences. So very straightforward, less straightforward and, you know, very promising and so on. So I just uh, want to, uh, you know, convey my uh, lessons that I have learned uh, well, alongside with my colleagues. So I just want to highlight that the IP generation and protection journey can be quite long. OK, and then um, uh, if I have to advise, I was really, I mean, everyone, you know, that presented before me, you know, talked about that their team. The team is very important. So build a team of likely minded partners and collaborators that have joint aims and uh, I recommend mixed in generation. So, I mean, I just took the similarity of this shells that, that, that produce herds. So, you know, it's the, the, the young and the experienced and so on. And so that mix, it's really that uh, what can uh, result into highly valuable IP. Um, I would say, I mean, if I, I have to do it again, is that uh, at least involve or at least identify research and users as early as possible. Uh, take measures to protect the confidentiality of your uh, outcomes and um, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, set a plan for the IP protection uh, and evaluate risk and opportunities, especially in managing the involvement of third parties. Make a clear plan on how to research team is going to communicate and disseminate res results. So Dr. Haytham talked about publication and so on, and definitely. So we have really to hold our young researchers from, from publishing until, I mean, we, uh, we secure uh, the IP protection, but at the same time, we need to, to play it smart. Uh, uh, I would recommend from my experience is to disclose and protect early to make the best use of the resources and time uh, and to enable a sufficient maturation and to de-risk um, your product within the funded uh, project timeline. Uh, and then also what I recommend is to stay informed on the progress of the local internet uh, local international market for your technology. Seek help from you know road department or from uh, from the specialized departments. Uh, what I would like actually to to uh, to also um, uh, tell them actually to decision Maker and the funding agencies is that it's really crucially important to provide uh, support to researchers to overcome uh, the IP maturation challenges. Um, you know, resulting, for example, in changes in star strategy and priorities at either institutional or country level. So I just took the, the example of, you know, uh, third cultivation, cultivation. So it takes really a long time. Uh, invest in IP protection beyond QNRF uh, project lifetime to enable maturing valuable um, uh, technologies. Uh, I cannot stress more than my, what my colleague is that invest time and funding in cultivating and preserving and growing the human capital. So uh, experienced researchers that, um, uh, uh, you know, that we, uh, we get from out, as an outcome of, of the QNRF funding project are really important. Uh, support homegrown expertise and also uh, you know, homegrown expertise that have really have been able actually to generate outcomes within the national research ecosystem. And finally, um, I mean, it's really important that, you know, this mixed generation of young people as from really high school up to uh, the uh, most experienced researcher are our human capital. So this is what can enable us to um, grow an elite of local researchers that would help to shorten the time to make big breakthrough and uh, novel and uh, uh, research and technological uh, areas. Uh, finally, I would like to uh, to thank again uh, the Qatar National Research Fund. I would like to uh, to thank uh, the colleagues that are uh, that, uh, that that are in uh, still in uh, in QF and uh, the colleagues actually that have uh, departed and who are who are my co-inventors as well and my external collaborators. I would like to thank uh, Texas A&M University of Qatar for computational resources, Kiriko Labs, and also uh, the support from the ADKT uh, team. And I thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Fadwa. Another excellent presentation. It's very comprehensive. So, uh, Dr. Fadwa, she really walked us through the whole process from A to Y and Z because she talked about the maturation problem, how to move the TRL level, how to increase the TRL level, and she explained it very well, the connection between ex extending or increasing the TRL level and keeping the IP protection live. If you have submitted, disclosed something at, let's say, today, uh, you might get a provisional application, which means it is a provisional pro protection. You will have one year time to increase your TRL level. And, and, and Dr. Fedwa highlighted the challenges during that one year. Is it enough one year? Well, the legislation tells one year. We don't have to, we cannot change it. 
but uh, what, how can we do and what are really the measures, the necessary measures to be taken for that particular one year to increase the TRL level so that we can secure uh, a continuous protection, IP protection, and that we, uh, in that way, we diminish, the, the, the reduce the number of patent applications that uh, can be abandoned. She also talked about the post lab uh, um, uh, phase, all the difficulties that we can uh, challenge uh, uh, to go to the maturation phase, the scaling up, and the need for a technological uh, um, a platform for that. Uh, and, and her lessons learned are, are really uh, uh, exhausted uh, how to manage internally the, uh, the, uh, uh, the team uh, and, and, and this very big dilemma between publishing and protection and, and, and everything. Thank you, thank you so much, Doctora. Uh, it's been uh, really uh, exhaustive and, and, and very clear. Um, thank you. I'll, I'll go, thank you. I, 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 I'll, I'll go to our uh, next speaker. So we heard from Dr. Afadwa. Now we will hear from uh, Professor Sumeya. Uh, uh, the presentation of Professor Sumeya is, is very interesting, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain to you why uh, uh, her presentation is interesting. First of all, let me tell you that Professor Sumeya uh, comes from Qatar University, and uh, this uh, um, honorable uh, distinguished spe uh, speaker was suggested by uh, the senior manager leading the social science pillar in QNRF. And here, very, very important message from QNRF. Please, those who are acting in the social science, please don't say we are alien to IP. And IP is not uh, is not our field. Uh, we never been uh, through IP. We don't we don't have anything to protect. You will see from the presentation of Professor Sumaya, she will be explaining and presenting a number of expected uh, of outcomes. They are no longer expected. She she will they, they are there. The, uh, uh, the 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 outcomes are there. Uh, those outcomes for for the vast majority of our researchers. Uh, and awards is they think they they are not IP because they are not patents they they are not products you know the kind of IP that uh, uh, outcomes that uh, Professor Haytham was talking about people think that only that kind of outcomes Professor Haytham was talking about are connected to IP Professor Fedwa will give you an overview of uh, on uh, a number of other outcomes that must be disclosed and they are uh, indeed uh, subject to IP protection. So, uh, Professor Fedwa, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nakisa. I will share my uh, presentation. So, my name is uh, Sumaya Al-Ma'adid. I'm a professor uh, of computer science and engineering at Qatar University. Uh, and I will talk about my journey and innovation from my uh, from maybe 40 years uh, ago uh, when I was young, uh, when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be an inventor and a teacher. Uh, I spent most of the, my time with my uh, friends in the library. Actually, when I was young, maybe uh, the uh, lunch break time, I spent it in the library. And uh, when I was uh, almost 11, I, uh, me and my friend, uh, write a full proposal about uh, a car that can uh, go in land and water. Our teacher were happy about our inventor, but they didn't know how to go further uh, with this invention. Then I graduated, I take, uh, I graduated from Nottingham University with PhD in computer science. Then I joined Qatar University. Uh, and luckily this time uh, we have uh, QNRF and Qatar University. They were supportive in, uh, in uh, for uh, uh, protecting uh, our IB. And also we have other organizations that help help me uh, see how, how important is uh, the IB, like Qatar Leadership Center, uh, QSTB, uh, Qatar Development Bank, and uh, Qatar Incubation Center. Uh, so I graduated also from Qatar Leadership Center and during these courses we take from uh, several universities, uh, including Harvard. Uh, it opens our uh, mind that how important uh, innovation to a country growth. 
So my focus area in the research was computer vision. It's computer vision is the field of AI or artificial intelligence that train the computer to understand the content of imagery, including images and audio. During my journey to uh, to understand to uh, in Qatar University since maybe around 17 years, uh, 17 years ago. Uh, I have succeeded to get uh, around uh, nine NBRB projects, uh, also other projects from Qatar University and other organization. Uh, this project produced uh, uh, patent, copyright and trade secrets. So for patent, uh, I succeed to file the five patents and for copyright, I uh, uh, published uh, hundreds of uh, papers and uh, several books, around uh, 10 books. And uh, also we have secret that we didn't share with uh, with uh, with other. We, uh, we know, but th this the trade is uh, the secret is very important for to keep our uh, invention uh, or a product uh, safe from uh, other and to take it further for commercialization. And uh, for more information how to protect your invention, you can refer to uh, QNRF uh, uh, website. Also, Qatar University provides a similar uh, uh, information. Uh, so I will talk about uh, the product of one of uh, uh, research uh, project uh, which deal with diagnosing of colon cancer. Uh, so uh, one type of uh, detecting uh, uh, cancer is to use uh, histopathological diagnosis, which means uh, is the inspection of bios by tissue samples under microscope to detect the malignancy. In this NBRB project, we aim to utilize a multispectral approach by development a clear uh, and efficient uh, model with confidential feedback to enable us to assess the difference, the differences in textures of the different stages of this type of cancer. As you, uh, as you know, in the HCC countries, uh, cancer was ranked the first most common type of cancer in the male population at 9.2 and the third most diagnosed cancer in the female population at 7.6 for a period of 12 years. If diagnosed early uh, stage, two thirds of colorical cancers uh, could be prevented or uh, cured. Uh, white light uh, colonoscopy is currently uh, considered to be the gold standard for colon evaluation and uh, screening. Although it has high sensitivity and selectivity, many persons uh, refuse to undergo colonoscopy because of its discomfort. A disadvantage also of another invention co called Bill Cam is uh, that uh, use uh, white light imaging and has proven not to have a good sensitivity for early or non bullet by the new bullet uh, new blasia. You can see here the inspection of a bios by tissue sample under our CAD system. This is the early uh, the early CAD system we designed. And you can see here in the lab, uh, uh, research assistant, uh, engineer Sashidra with uh, our uh, collaborator, uh, Professor uh, Ahmed Boridai, uh, working in, uh, in the early stage of uh, our project uh, for uh, a complete system to detect cancer. Uh, so in this uh, project, we succeed to uh, uh, to set up a multispectral image acquisition system, develop a color tumor database, and we export the efficiency of various feature extraction classification algorithm for automatic classification for spy images. And we use also deep learning adaptive CNN methods to stand out for cancer detection and identification application. We also succeed uh, to use uh, to uh, produce a hardware to spice for clinical cancer detection uh, and also a new uh, endoscopy capsule capable of uh, detecting colorical cancer based on Florence imaging. For the uh, first three outputs, 
uh, we already have publications, uh, around 20 publications, this the same project, and also uh, book chapters. Also, for the uh, two hardware devices we invent, uh, we filed the uh, patents. And I will talk about one uh, patent we filed, and it is already published. Uh, it's used for critical cancer detection and how why it is important. It can benefit the, uh, it can be used as a tool for automating cancer diagnosis and aid pathological uh, to additionally conform uh, conform uh, aid. And the application can use to enhance the speed and accuracy of cancer diagnosis, and it can minimize the manual intervention and effort. And the customer or market is, are uh, hospitals and the uh, healthcare sectors. Uh, the capsule has the radiation source integrated into the capsule body for illumination tissue within a colon of the patients. Uh, the tissue are uh, irradiated with radiation from the radiation source to elect uh, a Florence response and photon detector measure photons of the Florence response. Intensity and Florence lifetime of the Florence response is uh, determined based on measure photons. Uh, and this system has is more accurate than the other system, uh, the other invention uh, in the market, and it will be more comfortable because it is a bill. Uh, so it has uh, high sensitivity to detect the uh, new blasia. And uh, the method is based on Florence lifetime uh, spectroscopy, unlike the other uh, uh, method that use white light. And hopefully it can uh, uh, diagnose at early stage the cancer uh, and we can uh, uh, two thirds of coronary cancer could be prevented or cured. And uh, it is an emerging technology. Uh, using a capsule and uh, con could be alternative white light conoscopy. Uh, so this is a general talk about this invention, but what you have and other M. Jimson and uh, as uh, Dr. Nafisa said, we have also uh, 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 mobile application related to uh, to uh, uh, to education that use also image processing and artificial intelligence. Uh, however, we choose not to talk about it this time because it's still under uh, investigation. So we'll keep it maybe for inshallah next. Uh, seminars. And I also agree with uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, Fadwa and Dr. Abu Rab, that uh, yes, I, we faced some challenges in in uh, uh, in taking our product commercialization, especially here in Qatar. And uh, uh, we need like uh, a strategy, uh, our all strategy, that help uh, academic inventors to take their uh, uh, invention to uh, to uh, to the market. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sumay. Do you hear me? Uh, I hear some. Do you hear me well? All yes, right. I can hear you. Well, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sumay. Well, uh, Professor Sumay is acting in 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 some. Uh, uh, different areas. So uh, she talked about her inventions, but she talked also about she talked about her desire first of all to be to become an inventor. So congratulations, you are an inventor. And 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 she talked about also her her her, bo her books and uh, uh, her her uh, outcomes uh, that are copyrightable. So it, it was the uh, uh, the most important I think uh, 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 message for, for for this presentation. Uh, all the outcomes that QNRF is funding, and they are the vast majority, uh, that are not products, that are not processes, are under the umbrella of copyright. So uh, all those who are, for example, producing a new method, and this method, for example, is not uh, subject to industrial commercialization, who are those who are producing policy papers, who those who are producing uh, uh, a, a mathematical theory, a, a, chemi a chemical formula, uh, those who are producing uh, um, tools for uh, teaching, for example, uh, those who are producing videos, uh, 
those who are producing data or producing uh, a set of data, those who are producing databases, all people, and, and in biomedical, for example, we, we do fund a lot of research proposals uh, where the most important outcome is data. This data is and can be uh, really very valuable if you know what are you going to do with this data, if you know the end user for the data, and from this perspective, the data must be disclosed and must be uh, subject to uh, IP protection. So from this perspective, we are losing a lot of uh, uh, outcomes that we are funding heavily, but they are not disclosed and therefore uh, uh, they, they don't appear in, in, in our portfolio. We would like uh, uh, in QNRF to diversify our portfolio, not only uh, patenting, not only uh, inventions, and we would like to touch upon uh, those very important outcomes. Uh, Professor Sumaya talked about some of them, uh, but I mean, all those who are in, in, in social science, all those who are in biomedical, uh, all those who are in ICT and operated uh, in, in fields like software, not all softwares are patentable. The vast majority of them are copyrightable. And, and, and as such, they are IP assets. They can generate IP assets. So uh, 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 the journey is not easy when it comes to patenting, but it's far more easier when it comes uh, to copyrights and trademarks and uh, trade secrets and, uh, and registered uh, copyrights. So please, uh, this is one of the most important uh, messages that we would like to share with you. Uh, QNRF is funding in a variety of expected outcomes. When these outcomes come to uh, you, don't publish them and stop there. Uh, we, can, we can transform them uh, into IPI sets. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with the speakers, and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I would like to thank them very much, all of them, uh, for their very... Um, uh, really uh, uh, excellent presentations and talks. Uh, they have all touched upon the, vast, uh, the, the most important uh, uh, challenges. Now we'll start the Q&A session uh, and uh, I'll be uh, here presenting our uh, panelists. Um, Dr. Uh, Roberto, Dr. Nafisa is waiting for... Oh, sorry. Did I... Did I Dr. Robert? Yes, yes I, I yes. did. Oh, sorry about that. I'm very sorry, Dr. Robert. Uh, so, Dr. Robert, the floor is yours now, and you, you will be uh, our last speaker, last but not the least part. So, uh, please go ahead. Well, thank, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, thank you for the invitation to uh, to speak today. And um, it sounds like from uh, listening to the the other presenters, I might be one of the uh, newer members into this uh, technology transfer pipeline here in Qatar. But this uh, certainly isn't my first trip uh, to that rodeo. And um, while all of my colleagues uh, on the virtual podium today have distinguished careers, I think that um, something that makes me a little bit unique is that um, I have pursued a non-traditional career path in that um, my academic journey has been punctuated with uh, 10 years in industry. Um, and each one of these 10 years in industry developed intellectual property, um, had U.S. patents awarded and uh, commercialized technology that that all um, made an impact on the market. So in 2015, uh, I took a risk like entrepreneurs and technologists uh, need to take periodically, and and I left my position in College Station, Texas, to to journey to Qatar um, and uh, experience the ecosystem here. So while I have not been to this particular, on this particular journey in Qatar. Um, my, I have had a number of commercialization experiences over time, starting back when I was in high school, and I developed a personal alarm system for high school lockers. Dr. Dr. Um, I'm sorry for, uh, uh, you didn't share the screen. Am I not sharing my screen? Thank you for yeah. telling me that. Let me uh, make sure I, I click the button here. Says share content. Okay, is this better? Yeah. Okay. Please, yeah. I, Thank okay. you. Okay. So sorry about that. Uh, that's what happens when we go virtual. Um, so my commercialization experience, and I draw on this in uh, later on in my talk, where I uh, discuss some of the the challenges that we might have 
on the commercialization trail is uh, dates back to when I was in high school and I decided to try to commercialize a, a personal alarm system. And in the process of taking a technology for my basement out into the market, I ended up in detention because a high school principal didn't like the fact that I was creating noise when the alarm went off in, in the hallway. So uh, we, we always have to have some uh, risk if we're going to commercialize technology. And uh, I, I learned uh, my lesson from that one. Then along the way, uh, after my PhD, I was part of a spin-off company from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. This, the company licensed two initial technologies from the university. Um, that, was the, that was the genesis of the microinverter. So this was a photovoltaic market technology. And uh, the interesting thing in that experience is that it started with two patents that were uh, filed through the university and licensed to the startup. And um, at least one, if not both of those patents, did not make it into the final commercial product. So when we talk about intellectual property and patents, you know, patents are necessary, but not, they're not sufficient to make a, commercial success, a commercially viable and successful technology. And then after joining Texas A&M, uh, I also pursued some other commercialization uh, opportunities that were funded from basic science that we then uh, attempted to uh, incubate and accelerate. And so patents are not necessarily the most important thing. They're one part of the puzzle, uh, but that said, I've got 20 U.S. patents now. If we look at market impact as a measure of commercial success, then my efforts in research and development uh, in the microinverter has been the highlight of my career so far, and I hope to change that soon uh, here in Qatar. And here's a snapshot in time. The, the technology that uh, I developed that was part of Solar Bridge Technologies that was acquired by SunPower, a NASDAQ listed, uh, stock market exchange listed company. In 2018, 80% of their residential sales had some form of my technology or technology inspired for my technology in it. So that's 80% of 40,000 customers that year or 80% of $174 million of revenue that year. So people say, why did I leave that? Why did I leave industry to, to come and rejoin academia. And my simple answer is to, to restart that cycle of innovation, to get back on, on the ground floor and, um, and to restart that process. And, and that's what I'm doing here in Qatar. And so I've been fortunate enough in, in my uh, time here in Qatar that my research has been well aligned with the, the needs and priorities of Qatar and Qatar Foundation in the realm of critical infrastructure, solar energy, food security. Um, the projects that I've pursued here are, are thematic, with each seeking to advance the overarching re research mission while building human capacity at all levels, from undergraduates to postdocs, in addition to advancing the technology. We've had some successes uh, on the human capital. One of my postdocs is now an assistant professor at the College of North Atlantic in Qatar. Another one is an assistant professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago, and, and all have uh, NPRP funding to, to thank uh, for part of their success. So these projects have matured now and have led to a uh, portfolio of IP that are both systematic and synergistic. And so now is the time that I'm shifting gears. And so with technology in hand, the big question becomes how to monetize Qatar's investment in my research program. And so one example of a research outcome, and I won't talk too much about the science today, is a disruptive technology that came out of my Cycle 7 project. And so we often hear this term disruptive technology. And, and this really means more than just a piece of technology that's better, faster, cheaper, or that somehow is an incremental improvement. But really, it's something that fundamentally changes the game. It moves a market into a new direction. And so my Cycle 7 project team we sought to answer the question of why do we cover roofs with solar panels when the solar panel can become the roof? And the research outcome from that project was what we call the smart PV roof tile. And this is a solar module that's integrated directly into that building material. And so unlike someone else's approach, we know who that is, 
which is conventional, my team integrated the cells directly into the curved part of the roof tile. Now this is hard, right? But that's why it was an NPRP project. But the end result was that we were able to harness more energy from the sun for the same size surface area. And we developed intellectual property um, for a variety of, of aspects for that. So I was asked today not to talk so much about the, the science and technology, but more about my journey and some challenges that, um, that exist along that path. And so some of these challenges we've heard others uh, talk about this morning, and certainly they're, um, they're not unique in my experience. They're not unique to, to Qatar, but these are general challenges that many people face, especially um, if they're academic researchers trying to um, bridge that gap or make that jump into uh, the commercialization. So the first I'll talk about is the speed of business. And so when pitching to industry, I often hear the response, you know, when I'm asking for money, is if it was important to us, we do it ourselves and get it done faster. And uh, indeed, the industry is sensitive to the fact that time to market is a critical metric. Um, and this is something that we don't hear uttered in the university setting, time to market. Uh, but technologists, entrepreneurs know that markets have windows of opportunity before a great idea becomes an also ran or someone else gets to the finish line first. So one of the challenges is how do we ensure that the, the institutional rules that we have um, serve as guardrails you know, to guide us, but don't become stop signs to impede the process of technology commercialization. Um, another challenge is what's known in the industry as a sales prevention department. This exists in all organizations. It's what prevents a purchase order from becoming a sale. It's what prevents a great idea from being put into practice. So in the entrepreneurial world, we're used to hearing axioms like agile, nimble, pivot. It, it sort of becomes the antithesis of the sales prevention department. So the, the, the challenge here is to how to go from the no, which may be prescribed by the rule, to, some, to a response is something like, I hear what you want to do. We can't do it that way, but this is how you can do it. So in other words, how to get to yes instead of stopping at no. A third challenge is the, the funding gap or continuity of funding. And I think others have talked about this as well. So in, in the commercialization world, we all know about the, the valley of death, but other funding challenges exist too. So at the university, our workforce are graduate students. Graduate students aren't productive in their first or even their second year as they take courses, they learn the basic fundamentals of, of how to conduct research. And after the NPRP project ends, they still have to de defend and deposit their dissertation. So there's a gap in how do we see a, a student, the human capital from start to finish. Another funding challenge is a technology maturation moving from what we call the big R, the research, to the big D, the development. Now, I've been on National Science Foundation panels, and I've heard some of my senior colleagues tell me, you never use the word develop in a research proposal. That's the kiss of death. So when the research project is over, the papers are submitted, the challenge becomes how to connect the dots, how, how to find a funding mechanism to be able to shift the focus from the big R to the big D. Uh, one example is in the National Science Foundation, their i program that provides some follow-on funding for the technology team to start doing market exploration. Another challenge that many academic researchers may face is how to switch gears from thinking about the, from, to, from, from thinking about the solution to thinking about what problem is that we're solving. So a prize-winning paper does not mean a market-winning product. And probably the, the final challenge that I'll uh, uh, hint to today is the process of information dissemination. So stealth mode, which is essential for many early stage technology uh, ventures, is the antithesis of academia. A publisher perishes the mantra of academia. And us faculty, we love to talk about ourselves and, and all the great things that we're doing. But on the pathway to commercialization, stealth mode is often the prudent approach. 
And so a unique challenge of academic entrepreneurs is how to demonstrate academic output that we need to do for our annual evaluations while preserving the element of the market surprise and patentability for the technology transfer activity. Uh, this could be especially important for early stage faculty where a number of papers is a key metric in uh, promotion. So I discussed a number of different challenges that uh, someone might face you know, all along their path. And I think that uh, a key way to address these challenges are, are through partnerships. Uh, and the partnerships can help us navigate the winding path to learn when we need to pivot and to uh, gain experience for mentors who have been there before. And really the magic, from my experience, the magic starts happening when the stars align, the resonance of these partnerships naturally amplify any individual efforts. And uh, with that, I would like to thank uh, the various offices with whom I've interfaced so far uh, in Qatar Foundation, uh, whether it's the uh, QNRF for funding my uh, work, um, and more recently, the RDI, IDKT, and QSTP offices uh, for many fruitful conversations, for taking the first step along this path with me. Um, and I'm very optimistic about uh, the journey and also realistic that not all journeys end in success, but the, uh, the path, pursuing a path that's uh, well-developed and well-defined and uh, looks at the due diligence of the potential, the market potential of the technology is a worthwhile journey uh, in, a, in and on itself and will help uh, in the end Qatar Foundation fulfill its, its uh, mission, I believe. So with that, I, uh, I'd like to thank you for the invitation and hopefully we'll have some questions in the Q&A. Oh, thank you so very much, uh, Professor Robert and, and my satiric views once again, uh, I was very uh, looking forward to the Q&A questions. But uh, your presentation is really very inspiring and, and really thank you very much for the excellent uh, work and, and um, very, very uh, two, two key words from your presentation. I like it very much. The first word was taking risk. Uh, the second word is partnership and the long path. But you started your, your presentation saying that you come from the industrial area, right? And Correct, you yes. To academia. Well, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Because uh, uh, quite often we have people 100% academic, again with academic mindsets, and and maybe this is why we we uh, we are struggling with that because with the pure academic uh, uh, mindset that you want, as you said, uh, people from academia they want to talk about themselves, about their achievements in terms of publication. Okay, so um, if you have this mixture of industry plus academia, then that's really fabulous and fantastic. Um, you talked about uh, very, very important challenges. It's not easy, for example, uh, for, for uh, people who have been developing uh, the TRL level of their uh, technical solutions uh, to three, four, five maybe, and then they found themselves facing a problem. The project, the MPRP project, is 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 is, uh, uh, is done, completed. Uh, so they don't have any more funds, uh, and this is very challenging because uh, maybe the IP protection will be stopped and the applications will be abandoned because uh, the uh, IDKT or department in charge of uh, IP protection is going to tell you, well, you don't have more, more funds for that. So how are we? How, how are you going to? further develop your invention. This is not all your fault, this is not Kenner's fault, this is the fault of no one, but uh, this is just a very important uh, issue uh, because sometimes for those very specific and special uh, outcomes, uh, that, that we should not uh, stop them because the MP project uh, is finished or completed. So just uh, an answer, quick answer uh, to this challenge. Uh, we have in Qatar Foundation a couple of uh, projects like uh, PDF, TDF, uh, uh, I think USTP is also managing uh, some other funds. Uh, Dr. Abd Satar in his speech, he talked about uh, at least one very good and, and, and uh, promising program, which is Ru'ya. Uh, so uh, we are aware of this problem uh, and Qatar Foundation as a whole, uh, we are working on it. Uh, uh, QNRF is now adding its own solution to the problem with Ru'ya. So uh, we hope that with this uh, we can uh, address a, a little bit 
uh, uh, this, this challenge. Thank you, Professor Robert. It's been really a great pleasure listening to you. Uh, at this point, I'll go back to my presentation so that I will not make any mistake. My presentation says I... So I'm done with the five speakers. Uh, the five speakers were really brilliant and excellent. Thank you so very much. Uh, now, at this point, we move to the Q&A session and uh, uh, our panelists uh, will be given the floor uh, to answer the questions. So, uh, first of all, let me introduce our panelists and uh, let me thank them uh, very well, really a lot for accepting uh, q and and our particularly um, executive director and uh, invitation. Uh, so uh, I'll give the floor first of all to our first panelist, which is uh, who, who is um, Mrs. Amna Jaber Al uh, Al Khwari. Uh, Mr. Amna, do you hear me? Uh, we don't hear you because your your mic is muted. Thank you, Dr. Nafisa. Yes, I hear uh, you very well. Mr. Amna, uh, uh, we would appreciate if you uh, uh, will give you a couple of minutes. Uh, please introduce yourself. And please, most importantly, introduce uh, the, the department that you are heading, uh, because it is very important for our awardees, our, our research community, to know about uh, your ministry and the department you are managing. So the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Dr. Nafisa. First, uh, uh, I would like uh, to thank you and thank uh, Kionarov uh, for giving me this opportunity to be among uh, uh, a great mind and uh, IP expert. Uh, I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Uh, to start with, I'm Amina al uh, Director of Intellectual Property uh, Protection Department under the Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry. Uh, we work under the umbrella of the Ministry as uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, Central Directory for IB, uh, uh, IB and IB uh, uh, topics and issues. Uh, we work uh, uh, in several uh, IB uh, 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 pillars, uh, we are working on IB transfer, IB licensing or granting. Uh, also, we are uh, working on the enforcement of IB, uh, and uh, we are working on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, as final point as the, uh, 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 raising the awareness of IB. Uh, we are lately we are. Uh, doing uh, really uh, a few campaigns targeting uh, uh, several uh, society uh, 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 specialist students and uh, uh, and IB related aspects when it, copy, it comes to copyright and uh, uh, and entrepreneurs when it comes to trademarks. Uh, with patent, we are working with the, uh, the respected uh, uh, research and uh, institutions of Qatar Foundation and other uh, Qatari and national uh, institute, and we are willing to to uh, to uh, raise the our uh, efforts with to our uh, uh, international cooperation with the WIPO and uh, regional uh, relation with other uh, offices. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Emna. Uh, I hope now that everybody knows uh, uh, the Qatari IP office. The Qatari IP office is not Qatari patent office. It's the Qatari uh, intellectual property right. Property. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I really would like to to praise the the uh, Dr. Noor uh, Majboor uh, presentation that she touched upon all the aspects of IB and did not to narrow it to patent. And this is very important for us. Yes, yes, that, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that was really great. Uh, so uh, uh, you can pay a visit to that department. It's located in Lusail. Uh, so it is within the Ministry of uh, in the, uh, Commerce and Industry, uh, and, and 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 you can visit them. They can provide uh, uh, information, helpful information for all aspects of IP. So not only patents, trademarks, uh, industrial designs. Uh, and of course, and most importantly, copyrights. So uh, this is uh, our first speaker, Emna. I'll go back to uh, the agenda to present the second speaker. So the second speaker is Professor Shihab Ahmed. So Shihab Ahmed uh, was with us in Qatar. Now he's calling us from uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Riyadh. 
So thank you very much for joining us, uh, Professor Shihab. I give you immediately the floor to present yourself, uh, and I hope that you will talk also about your little bit your journey in, in Qatar Foundation as well. Thank you. Sure, Dr. Nafisa, thank you. Uh, so yes, my name is Shihab Ahmed. Uh, I, I called Qatar home for about 11 years. Uh, so I, I, I moved there when I, in 2007, and, uh, and and we enjoyed as a family every uh, every bit of our stay in Qatar, of course, and uh, we do call uh, it home as well, our second home at the moment. And uh, uh, I, I did start my entrepreneurial journey there, and I learned a lot uh, trying to do that. So I will I will try to set, shed some light on that. I'm currently uh, uh, in the electrical engineering uh, program at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology with a joint appointment in the petroleum engineering program as well. So I wear two hats and it's uh, it's mainly because of my industry background as well in the oil and gas industry. So I spent seven seven years in uh, in Houston, Texas, uh, developing oil and gas technologies for Schlumberger, uh, which I consider the oil field school uh, from my perspective and from the perspective of many people in the oil field. So I, I do, it's a, it's a period that I cherish in my life as well. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the points, honestly, were were really well discussed by all the speakers uh, very nicely. Uh, I specifically can relate to uh, Robert's points. A lot of Robert's points I really liked, uh, so I had them on my points. <laughs> so so Robert took away from my uh, from my input, so which is uh, which is great. Uh, so one thing I, I really was happy to hear, of course, was uh, the planned QNRF uh, research translation fund, which is the Roya uh, program. I think that's critical. Uh, so I think that's uh, one thing that I was very happy to hear about. Uh, I, I think we one thing I would suggest as well is is we we work in line with uh, with the Tautin program that was introduced by QP. I think that's uh, that's something that is is interesting. I think Robert also mentioned, uh, you know, with a solution in hand, uh, we're looking for problems. That's academics. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I think this is the nature of the academic world. And I and I really like that. I was going to just say it in a different way. Uh, we we have technologies looking for markets. Well, we want we need markets looking for technologies is what uh, is what we're after. So, I think we do have an opportunity with the Tautin program. I I, I really I looked at some of the uh, you know areas of interest that the Tautin program that is introduced by QP and really it covers a lot of areas here. Uh, they may not be in line with every researcher's interest, which is fine, and they may not be cutting edge research in a lot of areas. But it's always a stepping stone. I think uh, you know we we cannot we cannot say we will create a knowledge based economy when we didn't go through them. You know the manufacturing process, how to make it, how to how to improve it, uh, in order to in inject IP into these uh, improvements in technologies. Yeah. Uh, so 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 market is important, and I think if if we have an opportunity that's been created by the bigger players in the country, then I think it's. Uh, it's an opportunity we should seek, uh, is, is, uh, is, is, which is, I think that's very important, yeah. Um, uh, what else? I think uh, the, the researchers, all of all my colleagues have stressed on, you know, the publish or perish or publication stresses. I, I think that's, uh, you know, that's uh, natural in the academic world today. I think some of it is has become even unrealistic uh, to, to have, uh, you know, 100 publications a year. I mean, I think that some of it has become truly unrealistic, but I think it is important from a research researcher's perspective and the academic world looks at researchers this way. You know, your age index, your number of citations, your number of publications. Uh, are you an IEEE fellow or not? Are you a distinguished speaker or not? Are you this or that? I mean, this is this is how the academic world judges uh, the academics. So I think we would be unfair to academics if we don't let them play that game. So I think it's uh, it's something that uh, we we need to accommodate somehow as as well. Yeah, uh, you know, you know, Robert also mentioned the patents are necessary but not sufficient. I fully agree with that. I think it's, uh, you know, in the case that he discussed, uh, you know, he has the the, co the company that he was working for, really ended up not using most of the IP that was licensed from the university, which is, I think is okay. That's really for me. That's not the objective of university IP or. Or research institute IP. I think uh, you know we, to create economic value in the country is, is a lot more important than creating IP value. I think there is there 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 has to be some IP coming in at some point. It may be early on, maybe later on. Like uh, you know, my my opinion is that these, some of these Tautin uh, Tautin uh, strategies, Tautin opportunities, are not going to be IP intensive initially. But once you have a base 
or a technology or a service that you're providing, there's always a way to improve on that based on IP. And, and there you will differentiate yourself uh, in many ways. So I think it's uh, this is something, for example, we uh, we've been through in you know in two cases. So we've uh, we've we've founded a, a drill bits company, for example, in uh, in Oman when I was in back in QF, uh, where we were yeah, basically working on the technology development and design work uh, while I was there and through our QSTP startup. And then <laughs> you, know, you know a lot of that was really not the core reason why we are generating revenue today. Uh, but now that we have this engine, you know, then it's easy to build on top of that with with uh, or easier to build on top of that with injecting IP, but you know, with a proper partnership with these SMEs. So so good partnerships with SMEs is important. I think uh, a lot of the, you know, our colleagues here stressed on teams and partnerships and mentorships. I think there was, I think, uh, a, a, a good program uh, that was launched by QSTP at some point uh, where the entrepreneur and residence kind of program where I think it was a good effort in the right direction. I, I don't know the results honestly of, of that, but I know, for example, like uh, there was uh, there there is an effort uh, the, out of QCRI called the Ryan. Uh, it's a you know it's a startup that is based on you know QNRF uh, QNRF funded research and has been affecting you know hundreds of thousands uh, I would say of medical researchers doing uh, you, you, you know, doing research. So I think uh, and that's now sort of shaping into a startup. Uh, that's my understanding. But uh, again, uh, other thing uh, that I would like to mention is, the, you know, people have mentioned you know, human capital. I think human capital is important and, and very critical. Yes, and we do not want to lose our researchers. But again, if we uh, that, uh, losing your researchers is one thing, and then you know, market pool and, and translating technology is another. So, so we do want this Roya program to to be successful, and we don't want it to be turned into just additional research funds. To do something that has no market, so so I think that's uh, it's critical that we don't, <coughs> you know, uh, are not uh, going to be uh, favoring, uh, uh, you know, because we have uh, certain outputs or certain papers or certain patents that are coming out that we think that uh, this has enough market pull to generate a product and generate revenue. I think that's uh, that's not that, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. So. Uh, I think champions from industry is important. I think uh, during my period uh, there, I think we had a very good relationship with what was back then Rasgas. And then again, th there was a mandate internally at Rasgas for technology development, and there was a pool from their side to develop technologies. And, and you know, initially it may have been a little rough, but you know, once they realize you're able to provide input and support and technologies and and, and useful uh, input to their uh, to their value chain, I think they will uh, they will be your champions in the industry. So I think uh, having an industry champion inside is important. Building industry champions or entrepreneurial champions outside is important. And I I, I go back to this Tau Team program. Maybe maybe having a program where we you know push some of these opportunities and and get some of our local entrepreneurs to lead some of these opportunities at a, at a smaller scale and then have our researchers team up with them to further develop or improve these services or technologies i think is important yeah so i think these are my you know some 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 input i i can share now and i'm happy to answer more questions yeah yeah, yeah, you are extremely kind. So, uh, yeah, see, uh, uh, Professor Ahmed, you, you, uh, Shihab, sorry, you started already uh, uh, the debate uh, with very, very valuable uh, comments. Thank you very much for that. We'll come back to you with the questions. Now, uh, please allow me to give the floor to our, uh, uh, to, we have two other panelists. Uh, 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 please, uh, Dr. Uh, Haney. Uh, Haney is, is calling us from Paris, uh, La France. So we are moving from Saudi Arabia to, to La France. Uh, uh, thank you very much for being there. Uh, I know you started working on that with us from 6 a.m., so 6.30 a.m., so uh, thank you so much for your passion and, and, and for your kindness. Uh, Dr. Henny, the floor is yours. Just uh, please introduce in a couple of words yourself and your institution. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Dr. Shagarun. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be between you today. Uh, actually, it's a very uh, interesting topics and I can ensure you that this topics and this problems that you are facing it's not only special for you it's for all innovation institute all over the world 
So uh, to introduce myself, I am elect an electrical engineering with a PhD in nanomaterial. I worked several years as a scientist. So I understand uh, your problem. <clears throat> then I switched to business development. So in order to be able to transfer our knowledge and sell our technology and our IP to industrial or to create startups, when we think that uh, the time to market for this technology it's not yet it's not ready so uh, i think in the session of question we we will discuss a lot especially that i heard carefully for the five speakers problem and i think each one has his own uh, part of uh, of difficulty and his own his specific solution so I'm waiting for the question session in order to discuss a little bit more. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hani. Uh, last but not, not least, uh, uh, our panelist, uh, uh, Mr. John McIntyre, we've been, we have been for now more than one year working together, closely together. Uh, I, I, I personally sit in, in, in the vast majority of, of, of the meetings organized by ITKT and, and ITKT is extremely helpful in the sense that they are sharing valuable data with us. Uh, so we are working closely to uh, secure the best IP protection to uh, the outcomes funded uh, by QNRF. So uh, Mr. John McIntyre, could you please uh, present yourself and your institution? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Napisa. It's, it's a joy to work with you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Um, Abdul Sitar uh, and QNRF uh, family uh, for inviting me to uh, participate in this. Um, our offices uh, do a lot of work together and uh, we really appreciate Dr. Nafisa being uh, one of our uh, members of our Q teams uh, for each of our portfolios. A Q team is our patent uh, committee meetings and so she brings a perspective uh, from the funding side but also from the uh, IP, the patent side especially. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so my name is John McIntyre and I am the Director of Industry Development and Knowledge Transfer. That is the Intellectual Property Office for uh, Cutter Foundation. Uh, we handle all of Cutter Foundation, uh, Cutter Foundation Research Development and Innovation uh, Intellectual Property, uh, including uh, Texas A&M Cutter, VCU Cutter, uh, Wild Cornell Cutter when it's uh, funded by um, uh, QNRF funding. Uh, we also, uh, uh, of course, uh, manage uh, intellectual property for uh, the uh, uh, institutes within um, HBKU, uh, CURI, QCRI, QBRI, and also the colleges from HBKU. We also manage the intellectual property for some other entities outside of Cutter Foundation, uh, Hamid um, Medical Corporation, and uh, Sidra, uh, their intellectual property. Uh, when it comes to uh, Cutter, found, uh, Cutter University, we have a good relationship with them. Uh, we handle the intellectual property for um, Cutter National Research Funded uh, activities in the MPRP uh, area. And, and so when uh, it's MPRP funded, uh, we handle that for Cutter University and, and other players around the world. Um, so my job uh, as director is uh, managing the intellectual property and protection and also the commercialization. I am very fortunate to have a partner, um, uh, Abir Alhamadi, who uh, we work uh, together uh, in, in, in doing different things. Her, her activities relate around uh, innovation and economic development and a lot of uh, outreaching, um, outfacing uh, uh, relationship man uh, management issues. But uh, together we, we work to try to uh, make sure that, that intellectual property is not only protected, but it also can be commercialized and that commercialization also uh, effectuates uh, a, a um, well thought out uh, building of an innovation ecosystem here within Qatar. So our mandate comes directly from the Qatar National Vision 2030 and, and that's what we're trying to do along with other other groups uh, here in Qatar. And we, we, we don't think about us being competition. We think about us being as uh, as, as equal contributors and trying to build this uh, these relationships. Um, just a couple things about our office. Um, uh, we we uh, I've been in the office since 2013. I've had a great fortune to be able to work alongside uh, Professor Shihab uh, and uh, really appreciated all of his efforts that he did uh, here um, in, in Qatar. Uh, really uh, dramatically miss him. 
Uh, he's uh, great to deal with. We, our office did a lot of work with him. Uh, we, we had uh, a couple years where we were working on a license uh, to uh, an entity on that technology he talked about um, that was developed uh, in joint with, uh, um, effort with uh, uh, RASGAS. And, um, and we got very close to actually having that licensed out. And then the licensee, well, right before we were going to be signing the license agreement for that technology, uh, which was extensive and a very high technology readiness level. A lot of work went into that. Uh, a lot of work went into the technology itself, into uh, the patenting activity, uh, and and also into the commercialization activity. But uh, you know, uh, luck had it that uh, the company got bought out by another company in another country, and also all of a sudden the mission was uh, was uh, completely different, and and they couldn't take the license, and so so that was a lot of. Uh, um, unwanted uh, wasted uh, effort there uh, I, I we still have that technology dr Sheehab, and maybe we can do something with you while you're at Kaust. Uh and and we're 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 thinking that that actually is, is valuable so anyway keep that in mind um, just to let you know over the years we our office has had uh, two restructurings so we had our initial beginning in 2013 a restructuring in around the 2016 time frame and then again in uh, the middle of 2018. And so in 2018, our name changed to Industry Development and Knowledge Transfer with really a focus to try to uh, get, get people to understand how we work together in the innovation ecosystem. And during that time, we've had a great relationship with um, uh, not only QNRF, but also with uh, QSTP. Uh, QSTP, we've jointly done lots of different projects, uh, have what's called a research to startup program uh, um, that they started, but we, we work hand in hand to bring technologies to that program and have had some success in licensing to startups. We uh, also work together in uh, an entrepreneurial in residence program uh, with them. And uh, 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 Professor Robert uh, is involved with uh, a project right now that we're trying to do through that program, where we you get an entrepreneur out in uh, the world to help us understand the market better and see how we can we can go go through there. Um, uh, Dr. Noor also uh, actually used that that system. Uh, to to bring about uh, where we are with the CABI biotech uh, project. Uh, we're, we're going based on uh, a business plan that was put together by an entrepreneur in residence um, uh, from Ireland. And uh, so we, we also have um, uh, it developed uh, two new pro um, products last year, um, services. Uh, uh, um, these are abilities that, that give us some flexibility. And I wish we would have had some of this more when uh, Dr. Shehab was here. Um, but we have an innovation fellowship, which uh, Noor is on right now. And that gives her a certain amount of her time uh, um, is, al is allowed to be used on uh, business uh, uh, related uh, pre, uh, pre uh, startup activities, uh, pre commercialization, it's de-risking activities. And that's where a lot of our um, activities in working with partners and, and licensing to these different partners under the CABI Biotech name comes into play, all with the idea that we will spin out that company at some point. Uh, we also have an entrepreneurial leave program uh, where uh, when we do have a startup, or even if it's not a startup, there's a, another company that would like to use uh, one of our researchers who was involved with that technology that they licensed, uh, they, they, the researchers uh, within Cutter Foundation can actually take off uh, to, up to 20% time for those efforts and, uh, and and do that in a manner where we we manage the potential or perceived conflicts of interest and commitment. Um, uh, hello, yes. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, we still have the questions. Okay, uh, okay. Let, me, let me just let me just end with the, um, we, we have had licenses last year, we had 19 licenses, uh, five gever, revenue generating, uh, three startup licenses. Um, uh, there were seven to local Qatari companies uh, 11 to internationally, uh, so there is activity going on there. And what I would say is that uh, that partnering is is what helps uh, to put those things a lot. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Joanna. It, it, it's very important. So IDKT is the entity in charge of uh, providing IP protection to the uh, outcomes funded by QNRF. So uh, this is where you should disclose uh, all your outcomes and please all of them, not only what you see like product and process. All your outcomes can be protected. All your outcomes or the vast majority of them can be disclosed to IDKT. 
So you know uh, 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 the the institution, and you know uh, what to do if if you have if you come up with something you think it's interesting and it has value and it has an end user uh, at the end of the journey. So uh, uh, now I'll give the floor first. We would like to hear from our speakers. Um, any anyone from our speaker? I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Shihab because he he really in in, in in very valuable and input he he uh, he addressed and covered uh, very key aspects and challenges uh, um, highlighted by our speakers. Uh, is there any burning question? Because uh, we have like now 20 minutes left, uh, 25 minutes left. Uh, from uh, our speakers. I give the floor to uh, first our speakers. Is there any question? Please raise your hand or just do like this if you don't see the hand. Uh, OK, Noor, Noor, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Um, are you targeting a specific panelist or uh, you want me to design or nominate the panelists? I, I think, no, I, I don't. I think I have, uh, I mean, uh, um, specific panelists in mind. I think uh, whoever feels that can help me will be great. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nafisa, for the informative uh, session. It's really amazing. Uh, my question is, I mean, as John knows very well, we are trying to build um, a cabby biotech startup. So there is always a question of how many of our technologies we would like to file a patent, knowing that patent is quite extensive. And also we are looking forward to build a small startup, so it will take some time to generate, I mean, enough revenue. So how can we, I mean, find the right balance without building a, a startup that is already burned burned with you know too many uh, costs to, to be recovered so I think this is just you know the main question that I think would be uh, great if I can uh, get some sort uh, of uh, all, all the oh. I can speak I think but uh, let me if, if you don't mind let, let me give the floor to uh, Dr. Haney Dr. Haney and, and maybe if Anna, uh, uh, any other panelist wants to uh, add uh, some comp uh, added value uh, uh, added information, sorry. So, Dr. Dr. Haney, go ahead, please. So, uh, uh, Noor, uh, thank you for your question. Actually, yes, this is a this is a common problem, and always uh, inventor they know how much cost an IP uh, to submit the IP first in which country because. Now I understand that you have IP. Uh, one of the questions that I want to ask you, did you uh, limit geography your IP or it's international? And if it's international, which are the countries that you expand your IP to those countries? Secondly, uh, once you submit your IP, you need to uh, re uh, reduce the fees each year. You need to pay almost $1,000 or $2,000 each year to make your IP alive. So this is a amount of money that could be around fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollar on the all the lifetime of the ip so this is for one single ip so the question yes how to deal with this usually from our experience because this is a dilemma for startups usually university or the institute in your case it may be a cut of qnrf who will uh, fund for the those ip and then you as a startup project, you will be uh, you will offer QNRF some shares in your company or you will get a license from QNRF to get access to those IP. So this is one of the part of the of your problem. Secondly, uh, one thing I noticed for all the speaker or it would be a question for me for all the speakers. Uh, nobody present a team in his project startups. Are you alone or you already have your team? You are two persons, three person, whatever. Uh, how you are dealing with this uh, situation? Because this is very important to distribute the role of each one of you in this project. Yes, okay. of course, we are a team, yes. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Noor already also present her team, but I didn't have a time to uh, present uh, my team. Uh, actually, the the IB I uh, uh, the, the patent uh, I presented was uh, the main inventor is a PhD student in Canada. Okay. Uh, so, but from the other side for the funding raise, do you have somebody who's not uh, who's who has different profiles than you because? 
Uh, As I understand, all of you are scientists. You have a scientific, scientific background. So uh, usually in order to deal with this financial issues, marketing, funding, raising, etc., you need somebody who have a business profile. So uh, this should be also the, his role in order to find uh, fin f financing, uh, discuss with uh, governmental uh, project funding, uh, discuss with uh, private investor. So uh, this is the way how we uh, finance our IP. And you have the standard way that uh, your institute who he will owning those IP, he will funding this IP and he own, he has the ownership of this ID and you will get a license from him, an exclusive or a negotiated license from him to go and build your business. Yes, uh, all right. I, I think, uh, yeah, the complementary, uh, we have to complement each other. Yani, uh, if you want to go further, uh, the lab uh, stage, we need people from uh, other background. And this is a very crucial uh, idea. Uh, uh, John, please, you're, you're raising your, uh, your hand. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so just um, specifically in regards to Nora's comment, and, and we've been working very uh, closely with her office, uh, uh, and, and her group. Um, so we have been very uh, tactically uh, and strategically looking at how to protect the IP. And uh, in regards to the antibodies um, that we are uh, licensing out under the Cavi Biotech name to a very well-known international company, um, we are in, in the mode of, of doing a term sheet right now for that. Um, as we've been doing this, we've been thinking uh, very specifically about how to protect um, these antibodies because there's many of them and uh, doing all of the patenting for all of those would be very costly and and that would be something that the the startup company would need to uh, take on uh, later so what we have done is that those uh, antibodies that are being used for research purposes only those ones we're doing as trade secret and then those ones that actually have uh, some therapeutical or uh, diagnostic um, uh, in into you know, something more than that it could be commercial purposes, those we would be uh, you know, going towards the patent. And that's how, how we're going towards that. Um, and definitely the, uh, the need, um, as, as Dr. Hani said, there needs to be a balance. And Dr. Uh, Nafisa said this also, there does need to be a balance. So one of the things that we do and why we team with uh, QSTP is because we, we try to find entrepreneurs uh, um, out outside, uh, you know, either in, in Qatar or uh, in, in, in the international community who are in those spaces and have actually had multiple uh, activities uh, doing that, we bring them and that's where, how we're creating uh, the business side uh, to team up with the uh, research side that's here. And that's that's the research to startup program and the entrepreneur in residence program that, that helps us out with that, that activity. Thank you, John. Um, yes, please, Shihab, go ahead. Uh, no, no, I just you know one comment also. I just uh, addition. I, I I mean I totally agree with the, the entrepreneur and residents and somebody that's experienced. I mean that at least in my case this was the this was how we did it in both cases. So I I, I did partner with somebody from the industry. My my suggestion is don't go early. Wait you know incubate it as much as you can inside the, your lab and get it all the way ready for somebody to put some money onto it before before worrying about the startup. It's a lot of headache. So. It's uh, you know you're you're in a fantasy land inside an academic and research institution. So enjoy that and you know get get, get as much as you can done inside and then you know then move on. Thank you yeah. so much. It was very helpful. Thank you so much. You heard the wisdom. He's really speaking from uh, his very good experience. Uh, um, any any other question from from the speakers or if I might, uh, can I take the liberty to take some questions from the audience? Uh, I think the, uh, Professor Shihab, he went, uh, he covered many aspects uh, 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 highlighted from our speakers. So, uh, for the sake of time, because we are running out of time, uh, let me let, let me take a, a question from the audience. Uh, can anybody share experience or advice about transcending social and behavioral science research to innovations and technology? It's a philosophical question. I like it very much. Who wants to answer? Or you want me to repeat the question? 
Do you want me to repeat the question? Sure, why not? Uh, uh, can anybody share experience or advice about the transcendent social and behavioral science research to innovations and technology? I, I don't know. Uh, who, John, you want? Uh, she have. Let, let's give no, the no, question. John, John, go ahead. John, go ahead. Um, go ahead. I, I just wanted to point out that um, our office had a new website put together um, last October. Uh, it's it's something we've wanted to do for you know seven years before that, um, and we we have a it's a fairly vibrant uh, website. We have different guidebooks and everything there. Uh, one is a researcher guidebook, an, in, an inventor's guidebook, and an entrepreneur's guidebook. Um, we are working on a social entrepreneur uh, guidebook, and that that's that'll be coming out this year. So I don't we don't have uh, an answer to that question as of yet, but we're we're seriously looking at that. So. Um, I, I, I would like to um, have have that person who asked that question reach out to our office so that we can understand what specifically what what areas need to be covered. Now we're doing this not so much as um, we we deal with the intellectual property commercialization side uh, of of those social entrepreneurial type things, but we have uh, you know Cutter Foundation uh, community development, would, which would also be involved with this, but also the education side and, and other aspects. So. So uh, please uh, reach out to us and we'll, we'll help you uh, um, as much as we can. So as we're putting that that resource together, but uh, check us out at um, at uh, qf.org.qa slash IDKT and you'll be able to get uh, all of those uh, different things that we have put together so far. Thank you very Chita. much. Doctor, uh, Professor, do you have a, a other comment? Go ahead, if you if you do. Uh, I, can, I, I, I mean, again, it was along the line of social entrepreneurship. That that is, I mean, the, the 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 person asking the question is defining what social social entrepreneurship really basically is. So, so I think there's a lot of avenue there, and I think it's and I think it will happen only in in many cases with teaming up with technologists. So, so you know, IEEE, for example, has an initiative called Empowering a Billion Lives. Uh, or you know, so, so the idea there is to how do you deliver power to, to as many people as you can, or or connecting the unconnected. You know, a lot of these uh, stem from the UN's social development goals. Uh, there are 17 goals that the UN has, uh, which are related to social development. And I think if you take each of these goals, you can you can define multiple areas of social entrepreneurship that that require some technology input as well. So. I think uh, you know for 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 QF or you know large institutions to support some of these initiatives, it's 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 a lot of visibility, and I think there was a lot. I mean, there is a lot of that ongoing uh, already with uh, with education, right? Uh, uh, I think Her Highness had a lot of uh, you know activity in the education realm with uh, with uh, uh, educating and creating schools in many different places. So I think it's uh, and we've all heard of those when we were flying. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and these uh, these the discussions on or, or funds to to raise uh, money for educational purposes all over the globe. So I think so. Yes, social entrepreneurship is the answer, and John is working on that. So. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I fully agree. Uh, I, I've got a question from Susan to Dr. Uh, Robert, Professor Robert. Are you still with us, Professor Robert? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Well, this is a question for you. Uh, <laughs> he said. Uh, in your judgment, is there uh, is there a market in Qatar for commercialization? You work or are you folks largely outside of Qatar? If the latter, why? If the latter, sorry, if the latter, why? Yeah, I, I like this question very much because it is one of the biggest challenges uh, we are facing in, in Qatar. So, so do you have a market for your outcome? Well, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent that's an excellent question, and I would say that, that that's the multi-million dollar question, right? Um, we're we're starting to explore that. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that in in my discipline, the, the technology that I'm investigating do have uh, a need in the country. Now, whether that need translates into a market is yet to be determined, but. Um, you know, Qatar is a, as a, a newer develop, uh, you know, a, a developing newer infrastructure. You know, there's certainly a need for a lot of the technologies that I'm investigating. Now, whether the the large players in the market have a not invented here attitude or if they're receptive to, to new ideas, um, that's yet to be determined. Um, 
And, 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 and if you gave me five more minutes, I would probably uh, elaborate on additional challenges that, you know, academic entrepreneurs would have. Um, one of them that I might add is the, the credibility gap because, you know, per, people love to have a professor come and give a, you know, a fancy presentation, but at the end of the day, it's okay. The adults are gonna take over now, you know, uh, and I mean that in the sense of the, the executive boardroom. Um, and so I, I hear from a lot of my colleagues as well that, that there seems to be this credibility gap that the professor had a nice paper, but doesn't really understand the markets. Um, and, and I guess John uh, let the, uh, you know, let the cat out of the bag there that, you know, we're working with his office on, on um, you know, taking those next steps. And that's really where an entrepreneur in residence could add a lot of um, gravitas. Okay, we, we've got the technologists who, who, who did the technology development, but again, a great idea doesn't mean an award-winning uh, commercial success. Um, and bringing in the right entrepreneur at the right time you know, just like we talked about building the team, building the, the right team players at the right time could help bring the gravitas, the impact, and the right expertise to be able to evaluate that. So that's the long professorial answer to the, I'm still trying to figure out the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like, I like that. And you want to add some, yeah, oh, oh, let me let me go to this question. Uh, there is a significant potential in the research community here in Qatar with respect respective innovation in the biomedical uh, sector. However, availability of samples relevant uh, for real world testing of technologies, is there a way uh, for QNRF help in this regard? Well, uh, um, for example, creating official links with HMC, etc. Uh, um, John, would you like to comment on this? I would love to comment on that. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, as I pointed out um, uh, in, in, in talking about Fisa, she's, she's part of our Q team uh, committees. Uh, we have one for bio uh, um, technologies, and that one includes um, not only QBRI and others in uh, HBKU, uh, but it also includes um, uh, people from Hamid uh, Medical Corporation, HMC, and, and SIDRA also. So. Um, this is a this is an avenue that we have to try and develop the innovation ecosystem, especially in the biological space and everything. So there is a community in building there. Uh, we are trying to uh, to work on that more. Now, um, uh, as, as I mentioned before, my partner um, Abir Al Hamadi, uh, she she and her group have a program called the Al Kabir program. The Al Kabir program helps. Um, uh, local uh, entrepreneurs and uh, small, medium-sized enterprises in Qatar uh, to uh, work on intellectual property matters and everything. Um, through that organization, they do outreach, uh, and and they would be a great, great, great group to actually uh, um, contact uh, so that we can see how we can we can get um, movement in this biological sphere. There is a lot of activity going on right now, and with uh, with uh, Qatar Precision Medicine coming on board. Uh, and and that's meant to actually capture everything. And we'd like QU involved with all these activities. Also, anybody who's in this space, we would like to be involved with. So please please reach reach out to us, and we will we will try to accommodate as as much as we can by facilitating um, more discussion in that regard. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Um, this is a question: How we can promote and encourage private and public sector as well as stakeholders in Qatar for support and patents in investment and contributions for commercialization. Um, yeah, so it is a real concern. Uh, Shihab, Hany, who wants to do um, that? Both of you? I can, I can pitch a little bit and then, I mean, again, uh, remember businesses, uh, Dr. Nafisa, are, you know, they have to, they have bottom lines, right? So we cannot expect uh, everything to come from them. I think if we cater to their needs, then they will work with us. So. I think uh, yeah. we cannot do that as technologists all the time because we we may be doing stuff that is cutting edge. I think Hany mentioned that uh, that they're in their in their role they they would seek uh, industry partners, but they would also maybe start uh, start uh, on working their own startup when the technology is not ready for deployment. So many times what we're doing is not ready for for what people need today and what people will make money off of today. And that's again that's why when we see an opportunity like. Again, I, I keep I, I'm going back to this because I like it. Uh, 
when that like the Tautin program again the way it's pitched at least again capitalizing on that and and looking at the opportunities there and seeing how we can take these and develop local entrepreneurs to lead uh, you know maybe these are simpler service oriented businesses that that require bringing external technology initially but once you get into this business you will be able to develop further technologies to improve the service optimize it etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's my two cents yeah. Yes, yes, agree, agree, fully agree. Dr. Rehani, uh, we had a, yeah. a previous discussion and you have uh, like a, a semi a semi solution, intermediate solution. If we don't have a real an industrial partner, what, what kind of solution we can look for? Uh, look, uh, first I would like to to resume the situation in, in a few words. Uh, we are an innovation institute like uh, QNRF, like COST, like uh, CEA in France. What we do, it's not for today, else any engineering company can do it. What we develop now, the technologies that we work on now, it will be deployed at least in 10 years. So how surviving those 10 years? First, you have the IP. You need to protect your future market because it's not a market now. Then uh, you need to survive how you will finance it, how you will create the idea, how the, uh, you will make it successful. There is a in technology, there is a cycle we call Gartner hype. This cycle, I, I encourage you to take a look on it. It'll, it resumes the lifetime of an industrial process starting from a innovative idea till the maturation of the technology readiness teleprototyping, then you will achieve a, a phase where you think your technology in the lab, it's mature. You will go to transfer it to industry or to create your own startup and do beginning doing your real product. And here you will face lot and plenty of problems that you never imagined. Then you enter the value of death it will take you one or two years to resolve all this problem. If if the market begin to receive your technology, because maybe you, you materialized your product, but there is nobody who is ready to do it. And I can give you an example that it was faced recently. The Google Glass, it was produced by Google, one of the biggest companies in the world. They launched it for more than one year and a half. Zero success. They take it out. It was not ready. It was not a good time to market. So uh, one of the major challenge when we have an innovation, first it's to protect this innovation and see how we can grow it. And from the other side, we need teams that are searching on the market to find the, let's say, the earliest potential applications that we can address. For example, I, from your different subject here, one of the subjects that, uh, let's, me, let's say, touch me more than others because it's close to my expertise is the subject of Dr. Fadwa. She was talking about novel material and perovskite. Perovskite in your application, now you are targeting solar cell. But you know that now actually solar cell is is uh, is having an economical crisis. So most of the industry of solar in Europe they they closed, in USA they closed, and the only one is Chinese because it's dumped by the company. So so what uh, what uh, we are trying to do with this technology is to see where we can deploy it elsewhere. This type of material can be deployed for color conversion, so it can work for uh, display, for TV or micro display, for augmented reality, virtual reality, can be deployed for detectors, for, uh, for a camera sensor or image sensor or any other type of sensor. So you must do your market research to see uh, this technology have different potential. Where can I place them? Where we can find a place for them? And then adapt our uh, strategy to be serving not only one single application, but many, because when you are in startups, you must be very flexible. And like we say, you must be lean 
you must be very flexible because you you can gamble on one market, but at the end you will understand that it's not the time or it's not the good market. I yes. hope that I answered. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Yen. You answered actually uh, many other questions related to, to that aspect of marketability and, and uh, finding the right uh, market for your technology. Uh, now, uh, if you allow me, please, I would like to ask my colleague, uh, Sheikh Abdullah. Uh, we are uh, 11 14. Uh, am I allowed to carry on with another question or I should stop here? Yes, please go ahead, Dr. Rum. Okay, uh, for how long? I still have 5, 10, 20 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. Ah, okay, 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Well. Uh, thank you for so much for the distinguished panelists. My question is, in addition to the issue of provisional protection, uh, can you please describe other most uh, pressing legal challenges uh, you face in the IP process from the research stage to the granting of the IP uh, here in Qatar? Uh, can I can I ask Ustada uh, uh, Emna to comment on this if she wants to say a couple of words? Emna? Emna Kwari? Professor, Mr. Emna, are you with us? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Concerning the, <laughs> co concerning the uh, legal uh, uh, challenges, uh, there are no legal challenges per se. It is the the uh, it is the awareness we are facing, not with the with the with the institute uh, institute or research institutes in Qatar, but with the individuals at themselves. Uh, we urge everyone to to do uh, uh, the filing actually with our office instead. But uh, there are no uh, legal uh, challenges. Uh, let's say uh, the the challenges we are facing actually we are. Uh, uh, the concerning the the uh, human uh, powers or empowerment because we are very very uh, limited and small uh, office here in Qatar but we are doing our utmost uh, with cooperation with QF and uh, other uh, institution uh, research institution in Qatar yeah thank you so much uh, Amna. and and uh, maybe I would like to add just one thing uh, uh, the Qatar the Qatar patent office the Qatar IP office sorry uh, now in the common, very common flu yocha will be empowered, really empowered, because as you know, the GCC patent office is no longer now uh, allowed to accept patent applications, which means that uh, we will uh, have oh, sorry. We, as oh. we have discussed uh, with you, uh, Dr. Nafisa, we have been, uh, uh, we have hectic uh, two uh, negotiation weeks and we are still ongoing. Uh, uh, negotiation negotiating this aspect we are trying uh, our best uh, concerning uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this in this matter uh, actually we came to uh, uh, a conclusion uh, in this uh, topic that it's going to be very uh, 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 limited at this time till we are we move to 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 the uh, to the uh, uh, new uh, regime or new system that concerning the uh, re patent registration. Uh, as Qatar, we are very keen to keep this office uh, working and uh, actually we are uh, taking uh, very, uh, 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 the very serious matters uh, concerning the, the uh, uh, investors and invent inventors uh, from uh, Qatar and uh, 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 international uh, patent filing. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a great news, brand news, because uh, it will certainly improve the uh, innovation. Uh, and yes, and, it and is actually temporary. We are working on it and we, we're going to, to move to the a new system very soon. Oh, very good, very good, very good news for Qatar and, and for uh, Qatar IP indicators. Uh, John, please go ahead if you, thank you very much, uh, Ustada Emna. Yes, go ahead if you have additional information. Yes, and thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Amna, for your, your comments there. Um, it's very good news uh, and, and good luck in that uh, that new activity. Um, uh, so as, as Qatar Foundation, uh, we're uh, the largest um, uh, client of of the pat the intellectual property office here in Qatar, and we 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 definitely want to support those activities. Um, when I'd want to give a little bit of a uh, an understanding as to strategy that we take in regards to uh, patent protection. Um, we we typically because most of the technologies that come um, from NPRP funded 
uh, activities are usually around a technology readiness level of two or three when they first come to us. If there's extension projects, then they, they can build up to maybe a four or a five, which is really good. But because it's a two or a three, which is really conceptual, um, we need to have some further development. So uh, those, those groups that actually um, disclose to our office early on in, in their activities, we can help guide them in regards to which things are the most meaningful uh, for them to continue to work on so that the subsequent years that they're working on their project, uh, they can have more disclosures that actually um, create uh, more, more potential impact. Now, uh, we typically uh, go with a, a US provisional um, and, and we also uh, file uh, in, uh, in, in Qatar. Uh, and when we do a, a PCT filing, which would be after uh, maybe a US provisional is, is, a, is a 12 month period, um, when we go to the next phase, uh, we typically will go to a PCT because that gives us an extra 18 months. And so you have 30 months a time that you can actually work on, the, on your projects to get that technology readiness level up to a higher point so those patents are actually more valuable. And that's where you do your partnering and your, your other types of activities. Um, at the PCT stage, we use the, the Cutter Patent Office to do the EPT, EPCT filing. Um, and the Cutter Patent Office was the first gr group here in the region to do that. So it's a con congratulatory thing uh, there. And we, we definitely want to see the innovation index here in Qatar go, go higher. So, so um, that, that gives you a little bit of, of thinking in regards to the strategy that we use uh, for that. We're trying to uh, protect uh, as early as possible, okay, but, but also um, provide a pathway for how to go forward. Our, our disclosure review process is that we do a patentability review through a, a patent attorney firm, and then we have uh, consultants in that space uh, um, out in the world uh, actually do a marketability review. We share those with you inventors, um, and uh, this is not just for patented technologies, but we do share the marketability stuff for uh, things that are in the copyright realm, software and such. Um, and, and we try to give you those tools, that, that, that input, so that you can, you can use that in your further research. I'll, I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you very much Adon, for the further explanation. I take, uh, I hope, uh, another question. Uh, Qatar is tr transformed to be a knowledge-based economy taking into account the small market size in Qatar. So you see people are really very concerned about the market and, uh, and, and really uh, the industrial uh, and commercialization. So we have also to solve problem in, in bigger markets, uh, developing countries. Uh, is there a program for this aspect and uh, patenting outside the US and outside Qatar? Uh, I, I, for the first bit, maybe I'll give the floor to uh, Professor Shihab and for the second bit, uh, John. So Professor Shihab, the small market again. Uh, again, the small market issue, you, you will have to reach out to maybe people outside, but initially I think it's good to have a local market and I think you yeah. know, if it's defined in a certain area, you know, you should go after, after it. So, and it may not be in your area, and uh, and it's okay. I mean, that's you don't have to be. I mean, not everybody has to commercialize technology, so yeah, that's not everybody's yeah. job. Let's yeah. let's reach out to what makes sense, right? Whatever makes sense locally, we address it. Whatever doesn't make sense locally is a long and, and tiring and very difficult road, and we have to be strategic about IP protection and uh, and the way we do it. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, Qatar, Qatar may be a small market, but uh, uh, it's not forbidden at all to go outside Qatar and to seek uh, uh, exploitation and commercialization. Now, so the second part of the, the, the question is related to IP protection. So uh, obviously, if you are seeking uh, commercialization uh, outside Qatar, uh, then we need uh, to uh, uh, protect outside uh, Qatar as well. So the question, uh, why always protecting in the U.S.? Somehow it's saying this. Why always U.S. Qatar? John, can you please answer? Sure. So uh, the U.S. has a unique system, uh, different from anywhere else in the world. It provides the provisional patent application. That provisional patent application is never um, published. Uh, so for one year period, that that information is is is. Um, is uh, protected uh, in, in regards to time, uh, but uh, it, it's giving us uh, time to actually continue development of that technology and then the, the, we decide where to go forward with patenting uh, later on. Again, we, we do choose to go 
uh, in in Qatar, um, along with other countries where the markets um, are 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 uh, what meaningful. Um, so what I would say when you're doing research, uh, this is to the researchers, when you're doing research, make sure that you are solving a problem that can be used around the world. Um, don't don't think of something that, that is done somewhere else and bring it into Qatar, although you can do that type of activity, but that's kind of reinventing the wheel. You're not gonna get a patent out of that type of activity. But if you're actually solving problems that are worldwide problems, and you have a partner here in Qatar that you are actually uh, doing uh, pilots with, and, and we have a lot of activity like that uh, starting to go on here in Qatar um, through QNRF, MPRP funded, uh, jointly funded projects. Uh, QCRI actually has their whole time in existence. They've done lots of partnering. Uh, that's how we're getting lots of, uh, of, of licensable uh, software from QCRI because they, they work with partners to, uh, to solve a problem and 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 actually to uh, to enhance that 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 software that that program that actually helps to solve that problem and then it becomes something usable out in the world. So uh, the cutter market is small, but it is something that can be good for a testing ground. And uh, and and the thing is, it's not necessarily big enough to actually uh, do everything. Uh, you do want to be able to reach out to uh, have a, a bigger impact, and that would be in the region or within the, the international community. Thank you so much, John. Uh, Mr. Well, with your permission, I take uh, a last question. Is that fine with you? It's up to you, Dr. Nevisa. All right, very good. Uh, thank you very much. So let me take this, this uh, last question. What are the impediments to getting your innovative work to market, to the market? Is it lack of funding? Is it lack of a legal structure to support innovation? Uh, Dr. Henny, as a business developer, back to you. Maybe you have insights on this question. Dr. Nafisa, each case, it's a specific one. Uh, there's no general rules. Surely, uh, lack of funding is one of the issues because you need funding, you need to invest in your prototype, you need to mature your, your technology. Some technologies need more funding, more capex investment in equipment than others. Uh, others need, uh, for example, the, in your case today, Dr. Somaya, Professor Somaya talked about uh, talked about uh, software. Software usually need uh, more uh, more brains than capex. You need uh, to invent a soft and then to find the application and such kind of application could be near to the market than uh, other like technology like developing material or uh, creating a system because here you are developing an algorithm you need uh, engineer you need idea and you need pcs to do this maybe in, in an advanced case you need some super calculator to do simulation but uh, this uh, as i as i said each case has his own difficulties now going to the discussion the previous discussion that uh, dr john talked about about the us ip now uh, this is a standard even in europe we do the same uh, we do the same uh, procedure we have one year when we submit the IP, then later we expand the IP, it will be official. We need to expand it to Europe, to US, to Japan. We used to expand to China, but uh, recently, last uh, several years, we stopped to expand to China because there's no really respect of the IP properties there. So, uh, they're improving, <laughs> they're improving. <laughs> I'm doing better now. Yes, yeah, so uh, so usually when we do IP first as a European country, we submit it as a European IP desk. We get a number. We have one year to maturate this technology. Then after this, this one year, this IP will be approved because the, the European IP Bureau must approve the IP if it's public, if it's uh, can be protected or not if there's no previous idea about it then once we have this approval we extend we choose the country to extend and we have one year to select all the countries that we need to extend for so uh, 
This is a very wide question. As I said, each case by case, uh, and it uh, depends on the subject, how much you need to invest on it, where is the maturity, it's mature, it's close to the market, it's very far from the market, all this are specific cases. All right, uh, thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I've got now two minutes left. Uh, um, I, I just want to read this very, will the presentations of the speakers be shared with the attendees as PDF, for instance? Uh, uh, we all the speakers they have copyrights on their presentations, so we have to ask their permission. If they agree, yes, I think we will be more than happy to share their presentations because they are all very, very good. Really, uh, the discussions were really amazing, and and I'm very thankful uh, to uh, uh, first of all the highest management of KNRF who uh, uh, gave us this opportunity to organize this IP ROS. Very, very thankful and grateful to all our speakers, all our panelists. Uh, thank you so much all, and uh, I, I hope to see you all on other occasions. So with this, I'm done. Uh, back to you, Well. Or Sheikh Abdullah. Thank you, Dr. Nafisa. Yeah, we'll close the, the session now. Thank you, and I appreciate yeah, all of you. you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.